to see a new building boom? Well, in our, in our opinion, that's a $12 billion question because that's that's the investment hole that we see at the moment. Um, so is the long-term conditions there for a new for new building activity? Yes. And, you know, as I said, right about, we, we forecast at, at least $12 billion or up to $12 billion. Um, and that Rick is required in a relatively short term in terms of decisions being made, because it takes three or four years to design and build these anchor handlers. And if you include financing and all these sorts of things, uh, you, you know, you're talking 2026, 2027. So actually we're probably quite close to the point where companies need to be planning this. And so the conditions are there to do it. I'm certainly not advocating building these vessels on spec because I think the right vessels are going to be significantly more expensive than some commentators would uh, would believe because if you actually look at the specs that are required, get these priced up by yards, um, they'll be in the order of magnitude of double the cost of the last big anchor handlers uh, that were built in series um, that were delivered around about 2016, 27. There was another big ag handler delivered after and she was quite a bit more but not as much as these will cost because of uh, the uh, cost inflation so is the market today ready to invest in that well if you go and ask a osv company will you put up more well well north of 100 million dollars for a vessel i mean north of probably 150 million dollars for a vessel and that's just for one um and you're talking to an industry that that is recovering from the historic lows triggered by the low oil prices of 2014 that lasted, well, I mean, companies are still finishing their restructurings at the moment. And you've got historic shareholders and funders and banks and insurances that are that have taken those quite big hits at the time. So your ability to to do the deals you used to do, go to yards, get a 5% or 10% down payment, pay 90% on delivery, get get very high leverage, 80, 90% from a, a bank and financial institution, we feel is gone. That means obviously the companies need more cash and need to actually put more cash into that. So I think the conditions at the moment are challenging still. I mean, we've seen the utilization rates go up in the oil and gas industry and day rates go up, but we're not seeing the new build orderings yet. They're, they're happening in certain markets like the Middle East in the smaller sizes, but that's often backed by a state owned oil company with long-term charters. If you get a, uh, an oil and gas, uh, sorry, an offshore wind developer coming in and, and committing to a long-term program because they have a long-term program with these floating wind farms. Yes, we see that happening. And if you look at the bottom fixed wind industry, you will see that because of perceived shortages around the prime equipment of wind turbine installation vessels, developers are in fact engaging vessels much earlier and for much longer. You know, you know, we will commit to using your vessel for five years. Now, some you can argue how firm some of those contracts are, but they're, they're commitments that give people a lot more assurance. Now, if we move into that in the floating wind space, then I would say that that's going to create those conditions where the where the financing will occur and uh, where the projects will uh, uh, will take place for shipyards and equipment suppliers. So yes, there is building needed. Uh, yes, I think the industry is um, probably quite conservative about looking at it. Um, but quite simply, if we don't start investing, floating wind projects won't happen. And I would say just linked to investment, it's not just investment in the steel, it's investment in people. And often people, often I would say this is a for, uh, forgotten thing. We are talking quite complex installation vessels. They're, they're DP2 as minimum. They're, um, they're involved in subsea construction work using rovs cranes big anchor handling so there's safety issues there's productivity issues and for that you need experienced mariners with the time in their logbooks to show that they are competent to do these projects without damaging an asset or hurting somebody now at the scale of the fleet as it is today you've got the mariners to meet that although there are quite a lot of reports from vessel owners 
talking about struggling to recruit back deck crew, even bridge crew and engine room crew of the right caliber for, for the jobs uh, that we're talking about. Now, we're going to be talking about these vessels, even if the earliest what you ordered a vessel tomorrow, probably the earliest you get it delivered is four years time. So that's when you need your crew. So we've got another four years when the crews that were with those original 1970s, 80s, 90s anchor handlers are, you know, beginning to retire or, you know, are out the system. You've had the COVID issue. They've had the low oil and gas prices. Again, competency out the industry. You've still got people in there, but it's whether, you know, do you, do you have enough that you can spread them all around your vessels and the operations side to hedge your risks? So we would certainly advocate for companies to be looking at the training issues that are required around there, that the, any investment program, because the training is not just classroom training, it is man-hour training on the vessels, and that takes time. 